Hello, Mark. Hello, Joey. What is happening in this episode today? A lot. We take a trip. We do our first live on location. That's right. So you're going to definitely want to tune into YouTube or Spotify where we are uh, broadcasting in video. Yep. And take a look at the Lisbon Hotel. That's right. Which is... A brand new spot. Not Portuguese. Not Portuguese and not a hotel. But it is a brand new spot in River City. Yeah. It is the brainchild of our good friend Adam Hajazi. That's right. Uh, no stranger to the restaurant scene, the hospitality scene, uh, as well as David Wex, the developer of, uh, of River City. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool project and uh, amazingly tasty food. Which you'll see us get into. Yeah. And as well, some, uh, some really good drinks. Absolutely. <laughs> Cool. I like it. All right. Enjoy. Enjoy. Episode 43. Welcome to the Toronto Living's Podcast, a conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savell. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Living's team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mark. Hello, Adam. Hello, guys. Hello, Adam. Where are, are you? We? <laughs> we don't feel like home uh, anymore. This, this feels very different from what we're used to. <laughs> yeah, fancy. Yeah. We're doing our first live to air today at the Lisbon Hotel. Amazing. So happy to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. We're with one of the partners of this beautiful space. Um, really does feel like a, a spot you find in Lisbon, but not Portuguese, if that makes sense. Doesn't feel Portuguesey. It's not Portuguese. Yeah. It's a. Uh, Inspired by European hotel cocktail bar or European hotel uh, lobby bars, cocktail bars, and that overall feel and lifestyle. I think they nailed that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So not a hotel and not uh, Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. <laughs> That's okay. McDonald's doesn't sell meat, so you don't have That's to. Right. Right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, cool. So what we want to do is kind of spotlight some of the areas. When we started the podcast, we said we wanted to kind of hit up some of the other areas in the city. And Adam graciously was nice enough to bring us uh, to this place. How long has it been open for? Just past a month. A month. So five okay. weeks now. And we are broadcasting in River City. That's right, yeah. Uh, so we're in the southeast part of the city. And this has always been so way back in the day, like probably 10 years ago, I did a few deals in River City. Um, and at the time, it was very like, there's nothing here. You're kind of yeah. an island on itself. Uh, and it's good to see now that the businesses have come in a place like this, where you can kind of get out of your apartment and come chill with friends. So what's the reception been like? How's things been? You know what, it's been an amazing reception. Good. We've had a lot of love from the community. You know, even before we opened, people were finding us on Instagram, reaching out, excited for there to be something in their neighborhood. Yeah. And. As you guys know, this neighborhood has come together fairly recently and is still developing. There are some wonderful pieces to it. You know, we have the Corktown Common across the hall here, or across the street, and there wasn't really a place that ties together the neighborhood, mm. and so that's sort of how Lisbon Hotel was inspired. My, uh, my partner, David, is the developer who built River City, and so the four towers here. And as part of that, you know, the uh, the project was progressing and they looked around and said, you know, we've created something beautiful here and we need to add life to it. You know, it, it needs to be a community that has a pulse and a heartbeat. Yeah. And so they reserved this space for that purpose mm. and ha had an idea of what it could be, but didn't really know how to turn it into that. And he had spoken to some other potential partners and thought about ways that it could come together. And we got introduced through his wife. Mm. So his uh, wife is a longtime friend of mine. I've known her for about 10 years. Mm. And David and I had worked together on a consulting project in Montreal. So for one of his developments there, that had gone well. And then about a year later, which was in late 22, he reached out to me about this. And he said, hey, you know, I'm working on something in Toronto. I was maybe hoping you could help out. Let's talk a little bit about that. And as we started chatting about it, you know, we both got more excited and decided to partner on it together. And so this, it's not really considered a restaurant, it's more of like a cocktail lounge, like a lobby bar feel to it is kind of the vibe I'm getting from it. Yeah, exactly. And part of it was taking the, the piece of clay and then molding into what it is mm -hmm. versus saying this is what I want and finding the right place for it. And so we knew we had this space which is about 1200 square feet so it's not a big space 
It's not big enough to be a full-size restaurant. You don't have a lot of space for a kitchen, so we did a really tight kitchen that can produce great food and said, you know, we want something that adds to the community that's morning, afternoon, evening. And so the idea of that European hotel lobby bar came to mind where you may have breakfast there, you may have a coffee and a croissant, and then you come and have a cocktail before you go out for dinner, or you have one cocktail at the end of your uh, night before you go to bed. Yeah. Which is uh, something I've done a lot of my trips, especially in Europe. <laughs> well, and that's the one thing, the whole vibe of this place is a very walkable little community where um, you could go from, you know, chilling with your friends at their condo, come here for a drink, and then head out into the core of the city. But I like yeah. how it kind of keeps that vibe in the whole underpass park. I don't know if you've had a chance to yeah. walk through it. That was one of my favorite additions to the area, how they got this whole community under the park where instead of having it a derelict, neglected space, they made something with it. Um, and very much this ties in, like the whole vibe, it's got this nice kind of seamless correlation to sort of the vibe of the underpass park or the, the culture and the looks and the colors, like this mural wall here at all. You guys did good is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> in a long winded you. way. Um, now, you're no stranger to the restaurant scene. You've been in the business for over a decade at least. Yeah, it's, it's uh, approaching two. Two decades. Yeah. Oh my God. There we go. Okay, we're in good company. <laughs> yeah. We started out, both you and I, as uh, meat cutters and then. We were. Oh, you were in the butcher evolved. business as well. Listen, yeah. listen. All great people start in the butcher business. <laughs> the second you meet someone, you're like, I know I'm going to like you because we started in the same spot. And, you know, I got that vibe right off the hop that, like, it takes a lot to be in that industry. Yeah. <laughs> you can survive that, you can survive anything. Uh, but so you went from there and then tell us a little bit about your journey to get to where you're currently at today. Yeah, yeah. So I worked in some food businesses in high school, did some other things and had uh, a lot of the crappy jobs you have as a teenager yeah. and you know tried out a bunch of different things and so when it came time to decide what I was going to do for university or post-secondary I realized that all the jobs that I didn't hate had to do with food nice <laughs> and uh, and so I decided to go to George Brown and do the culinary management program and a little bit uh, the rest is history mm. you know I worked in some good restaurants in Toronto I used uh, cooking and hospitality business because it's a global industry, because it's something that's really transferable to travel. I worked in France for a year, I worked in Italy for a year, came back to Toronto, uh, ran the Troni at Summerhill. Mm. Most, I don't know if either of you guys have been there. The yeah, best big, one, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big rooftop patio, yeah. nice view of the city. So I ran that for a few years. Uh, I ran the Buca restaurants. And right now I'm running Italy in my uh, full-time job. Amazing, good stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, 20 years does sound like a long time, but when you break it down into a two minute summary, like that's a pretty fast trajectory to get you to where you are today. So kudos to you on, on Thank all you. that and getting Thank it there. Um, so tell us a little bit about what Lisbon Hotel is about in terms of the drinks, the food, like what would you suggest someone tries when they come here? So our menu is really curate around those smaller plates that are easy to eat. We have some great options that represent, you know, the uh, classic stuff from Europe, salumi and cheese. Mm. We have some interesting dishes that are takes on that, like our warm chorizo with mm. green sauce. And then a lot of easy bites. We have anchovy toast with cucumbers and lemon zest. And our one dessert, which is all you need because it's so good. People are like already raving about it. So we have a chocolate mousse that has olive oil, Malden salt, and toffee on it. And you guys are gonna try it before you leave today. Right, yeah. <laughs> I've noticed this trend on Instagram where people are like putting olive oil in their coffee, in their espresso. I think I it's seen that actually. It, it looks disgusting. <laughs> I think it's just for clicks, but I might be okay with it now that you're saying that you're putting it in dessert. Maybe this is like... There was that trend around butter in your coffee... Bullet coffee. I don't know, five Bullet years yeah. ago yeah, or whatever right, it was. Right. This is the gateway coffee. You're... <laughs> is that that's what gets you that's, into yeah. it? Yeah. You start with olive oil and progress to butter? <laughs> <laughs> well, you even saw one where they put an orange, pe uh, like a slice of orange, and then they run the coffee through that. Yes. So citrus and coffee is, is traditional in parts of Italy. I think it's Sicily. It's definitely the south. Obviously, that's where the citrus grows. Yeah. Right. Doesn't look... <laughs> to be no. Have you ever rubbed the rim of your espresso cup with uh, citrus zest, like lemon yeah. zest or orange zest? Should I? It's nice. It's worth trying. Can we? We can do that. Okay. All, right. All right. So you guys got a coffee bar here as well. You kind of set up for that. We do. Yeah. We do. So right now we're open in the evenings only. So yeah. 5 p.m. till midnight. Nice. And it's quite long. That's a good. Uh, yeah. 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 And then, 
you know, to again, to be that sort of social hub for this community, we are eventually going to be opening morning until night. And nice. so uh, we have a coffee machine, we have an espresso machine, eventually we'll offer the pastries, the coffee, the daytime activities. Sweet. So, and I, I heard a potential rumor of a patio. There is, there is. David was thinking ahead in uh, planning this, and so when they actually did the zoning for the building, yeah. this chunk of uh, property just outside here is private, attached to this business. Okay. So I'm sure you've seen uh, challenges with street side patios in Toronto yep. or with condo buildings having patios below them. You know, we have a great relationship with the condo building and the board. We also have this as a private patio. So Amazing. Uh, we yeah, purchased the patio furniture last week and licensing <laughs> is in progress. So we are very excited for the okay. summer. Yeah, amazing. Um, does David have any other projects coming in River City or it's, it's complete? River City is complete. Yeah. So this building that we're in is River City phase four. Four, right. And this was the last one, which I believe was just incorporated early last year, so okay. in 2023. Okay, yeah, so you have three. Three is kind of the showpiece, that really cool architecture. You see it when yeah. you're looking like if you're along King Street and you're looking east, it's just this really cool pixelated yep. piece coming out. Yep. Um, and what I so much love is that like you no longer have to go to Canary District or some of the other pockets. You can now come right to Lisbon Hotel and uh, stay in the community. Yeah, you don't have to travel very far. Yeah, and uh, the hope is, well, we know that the community is still developing. We have Canary District just on the other side of those buildings yep. and there's a lot of uh, condominiums that are still coming online and yep. this community will continue to grow and thrive you know and I'm sure there will be more development as there is everywhere in Toronto <laughs> yeah I heard about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> can't escape thing. it yeah. Yeah. yeah so no it's got a really um, uniqueness to it in the sense of you don't really see Toronto doing the whole wine bar vibe too much yeah like everyone's more focused on the dinner menu and I love that you guys are kind of doing something a little bit different where you are would you say you're one of the first to do? I think there are lots of people that are doing great things in Toronto. You Thank know. you. Oh. We got drinks coming up. Oh, it's getting good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, uh, yeah, I think there are lots of people that are doing excellent things. And, you know, there, there's no original art. Fair. You're always reinventing or reinterpreting something that exists. And if you do it well enough, then it becomes an original. That's a very humble response. I will accept that response. I will, <laughs> I will press you further on it. What are we drinking? What do we got here? Let's talk about this. So this is always available, not on the printed menu, but is my favorite drink, and it's a port and tonic. So yeah. with white port and tonic, and there's something about the aged and sweet character of the port with the bitter herbal quinine from the tonic that quinine? just goes together beautifully. That's the, yeah, that's the actual, uh, ingredient that is in tonic that makes tonic taste like a taste. Did you know that? No, no, no. Can you say that word again? Quinine. Quinine. I am going to sound so smart when I go home tonight to my <laughs> wife. Do we have any quinine in the fridge? <laughs> is there enough quinine in our tonic water? Um, so I was in Portugal this summer. I've had a port tonic here, but it's like when you never had a Negroni or a Campari before. Like when the first yeah. time you're in Europe, you're like, whoa, because you know, in Toronto, especially in the last, I would say like 10, 15 years, there wasn't that much evolution in the cocktail scene. There's right. a, like Bar Chef was doing a couple cool things, but yeah. few and far between. And it's such a simple uh, combination with such a like unique taste to it. Yeah, well, I'm excited for you guys to try it. All right, Thanks. salute. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Come on. Oh, that's so good. That is smooth. Oh, that's yeah. really good. It's a beautiful way to start the afternoon. I, uh, I'm hydrated. I feel hydrated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just instantly satisfied, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so talk us a bit about what, uh, what the drink menu looks like. You guys are still developing that out, or is it kind of where you want it to be? You know what? We started with a very strong menu, and it will continue to evolve. I think we wanted in both the food and the drinks mm -hmm. to start with a small menu that we can execute well. There's no duds, and then... Once you know that you can execute everything, you Start build on it, you, know, yeah. you introduce specials. Our general manager, who's also the creative mind behind a lot of this, is her name is Sally Gillespie, and she is a wizard when it comes to the Did bar. Did we meet her? We met her very briefly. Sally. Yes. Shout out, Sally. <laughs> shout out, big shout out to Sally. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Where, that, that is massive lemon. <laughs> I can feed a family. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen, I think it's called a Cedrat lemon? They're 
the size of a small uh, melon. Wow, no, no. They are from Sicily and their pith is probably two to three inches thick. And the, <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. So they grow in the Mediterranean as you expect. There's one restaurant now, uh, uh, sort of like world class, it's called uh, Mirazur. And they open it up, hollow it out, and then cook a small chicken in it, I think. And then, yeah, <laughs> they actually close it up, throw the whole thing in the oven, roast the chicken, pull it out, you know, unveil the, the chicken that's stuffed with whatever truffles probably or something inside, and then they slice it for your table side. We gotta try this. Yeah, this sounds, like, this sounds like something so I that, need. That's coming in the spring, right? Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Can we get a chicken inside of that? <laughs> no pressure, but. <laughs> So, and what about, uh, do you guys have the wine menu sorted out or are you working yeah, on Yeah, so we have a, a simple wine menu, again, you know, for the wines, we wanted to represent the best that Europe has to offer. We're not looking at the luxury labels, the, you know, Burgundy, Barolo, Bordeaux, which are excellent wines. They're at a price point that's not always accessible and there are so many other great regions from Europe that are underrepresented. Yeah. And one of the great things is that we have a small space, so we don't need a huge allocation of whatever we're buying. So if somebody has a case or a couple of cases of something that's unique and available, we can take it. We don't Love need right. a lot of product to make it work here. Yeah. What about ports? Are you guys, doing, are you guys going down that road? We, we are. We are looking at having a great offering from Spain and Portugal. Sally is working on that right now. I know she had a meeting with some suppliers last week. Okay. She needs a taste tester. Yeah, we can. We'll give you the nay or yay on uh, on Sally's. You know, picks. we could do another one for the uh, tasting. <laughs> Decide maybe, what the final ones are. Maybe uh, off camera, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll indulge that. I I never had port wine before. Uh, this summer is my like I said, I was in Portugal, and it was like such a delicious after meal treat, almost a yeah. dessert in itself to just have that. You know, Italians were used to having uh, grappa at the end of it, and don't get me wrong, I love my camomile. But something about that mm -hmm. port was such a, in my stomach, my acid reflux really appreciated that. <laughs> nice. It was a lot more like uh, digestible than some of the uh, the hard Camparis and stuff. Um, that's awesome, man. So talk to me about the food a little bit. Yeah, so the food is on, a lot of it is with uh, like sharing style? small plates, yeah. sharing style. More than enough options to have a meal, but can also be a little bit of a snack. Mason Sankey is our chef, and he has done some really great interpretations of things. We're going to try a couple of dishes, okay, one nice. of which is the marinated mushrooms with uh, garlic aioli. Oof. It's been a big hit so far. Simple and a lot of technique put into it that, you know, isn't, isn't elaborate on the plate, but hopefully you'll, you'll taste it in the... Uh, in the palate. In the palate, yeah. yeah. And similar with the warm trees or with green, green sauce. You know, it's about the flavors and how it all comes together. Sure. When you think about most restaurants, I think a lot of people look at a lens of uh, a cuisine or a culture, right? You're an Italian restaurant, you have to cook food that's traditionally made in Italy. Could be said of Chinese or, or any other place. That's sort of your palette that you paint with is the culture. Now, in this case, we don't have a culture strictly, we have a Portuguese name, but it's not a Portuguese menu per se. And so our limiting thing is actually the size of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a hood, we only have a super powered oven, so it's nice. a combination oven. And you know, we got like a top of the line, brand new, very cool oven that has three decks. And so really the canvas that we can paint on is what can we make in this mm. small kitchen with right. limited storage, limited cooking equipment, right? We don't have a boiler, like a pasta boiler. We don't have a deep fryer. We don't have a gas stove top. So it's really about that's the palette that you're using to paint from. Yeah, and that's like, how can your creativity be applied to use the limited you know, options you have to come up with some really incredible dishes and pieces yeah. and stuff like that? Um, there's just a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. And, and then uh, in the summer, we're going to expand. You know, we have, we'll be doubling our capacity in the summer, so we're going to have to add something. We're planning to add a little raw bar outside. You know. Nice. Very cool. Oysters? Yeah. Oysters, other crudos, and, uh, and seafood dishes. I, I think you guys are going to have tremendous success. Like, just sitting here, we've seen so many people. We're in February. It's cold. Yeah. Today's one of those weird minus 10 days, which... Yes, she was like plus 10, anyhow. And uh, you see the people walking by, and I think having that one central place where you can just pop in is, uh, 
something I so much love about Europe and that gap is now what I'm learning from you starting to get filled in a place like this. Yeah, and I think we're seeing it with Toronto. You guys probably know better than me that Toronto is getting bigger and yeah. so the neighborhoods are getting smaller. Yes. Mm -hmm. People don't travel as far, one, because it takes <laughs> a very long time to get across the city of Toronto now. Yep. And so it's more about what's in your local neighborhood, what's your go-to spot. And obviously COVID really uh, pushed the idea of like shopping local and yep. supporting your local businesses. And I think that's a long-term good thing for everybody. Yeah, I definitely see the city getting like, as it gets more dense, you're, like, you hit it right on. You're not going to want to travel. Your doctor is not going to be an hour away. You're going to go to your local doctor, your local dentist or whatnot. Um, and I think your timing of this is probably like right in the right cusp where thankfully you didn't come out before COVID because yeah. that would have been. Um, but now it's like everyone's wanting to go back to these places. And I think the Toronto food culture scene in itself, I mean, I'm sure you know that now we have Michelin star restaurants. We didn't have this even three years ago. Uh, people are open to exploring these new places. And the, we have a lot of conversations with like, what do you guys like going? Where, what do you suggest we go for dinner and stuff like that? Yeah. So I want to kind of, pick your brain, um, you know, second to this place, because obviously this is number one. What are some of the spots in the city that you think people need to try? I know you're a West Ender. Ooh, I keep a, a list on my phone for this because I'm in the industry, people yeah. are often asking for recommendations. So I keep a list sort of thinking about, you know, what, what's the occasion that you want? Are you looking for something That's for a, a date, for, for a, a casual weekday dinner? You know, I have, there are great representation of all cultures and foods in Toronto. You have great ramen, you have great sushi, you have great Italian food, obviously Italian food. Yeah. There are so many Italian restaurants so in many. Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> Too many, maybe? And, Too many? <laughs> you know, I, I thought that for many years and then another Italian restaurant opens up and it's busy and then another Italian restaurant open up, opens up and it's busy. And I don't understand how people have this insatiable appetite for Italian food, but in, <laughs> in the GTA, they do. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable, truly. Yeah. Have, so what would be like your uh, dark horse or like, you know what, I'm a three for a wild card. This is the place you gotta try. It could be any. Can I reference the list? Yeah, yeah, of course. You can reference right. the list. <laughs> do you wanna do, maybe we'll drop a news you can use segment? Sure, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just, we're freestyling yeah, it today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Toronto Star put out a story this week about 44,000 realtors. Did you read that? Yeah. 44,000 realtors are leaving the city or yeah. are leaving the industry, which I welcome. I wish that was the, the, <laughs> the, the case, but uh, that's actually not true. Uh, so the Toronto Real Estate Board put out this pretty, I wouldn't say damning, but pretty accurate representation. What this Toronto Star article did was they looked at all people in the real estate related industry. So it's realtors, it's property managers, it's appraisers, and came up with a number of 44,000 leaving. So unfortunately, <laughs> the competition is still really dense. Yeah. Uh, but if you read that article, the correct takeaways, about 5,000 have left the industry. Out of 110, we're at 105 in Ontario. It's a very different yeah. number, yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you get so many realtors are in the city? Probably, I would imagine half are in the GTA of whatever's in Ontario is. So 110 are in Ontario. So I'm guessing it's 55 or 60 in the Toronto area. 80,000. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's more realtors than Italian restaurants. There are. <laughs> and you know, a lot of uh, servers and bartenders and people that were in the hospitality industry moved to real, real estate, estate during, yeah. during COVID. And you know, one of the reasons is the, the sales skills, yeah. obviously, right? The interpersonal sales, the sales skills, the understanding how to market a product, how to curate your spiel to whoever you're dealing with, right? You can be selling the same product, but who you're selling it to, you're gonna pitch it a little bit differently. Yeah. Plus so. the hospitality, like we've been doing a lot of, uh, did you watch The Bear? Oh yeah, of course. So good, right? <laughs> so good. So good. We've been deep into that and uh, we're reading like a lot of the hospitality books, Danny, My Danny Myers, uh, I can't remember the name of the book. Setting the Table. Setting the Table, thank Required you. Required reading for this so, industry. <laughs> like this is all new to me. Really? And like okay. I finally made the connection of hospitality to real estate. Like we don't, yeah, anyone could sell, but it's mm -hmm. how you make the people feel. And that's, anyone could cook food, but it's what your experience like when you're having the food that really elevates the whole mm -hmm. Process, experience, right? yeah. yeah, and like which Toronto is no cheap city. When you're spending 500 bucks on a meal, if you're getting service, you're like, mm, you know, that can ruin the whole meal, even though yeah. the meal might be good, right? So, um, and I think on the opposite side of that, service can be technically flawed, but if it's warm and caring, and you feel like somebody's genuinely trying to take care of you, absolutely, it can still be a good experience, absolutely. Which is the perfect segue because 
I want to give you something, a gift for having us here. <laughs> oh. So we do this thing on the show where um, basically we blow off a cannon of confetti. I love that. Would you be interested in... <laughs> I would love nothing okay. more. Because <laughs> you are our inaugural... On location podcast. Podcast. Yeah. I think it's only right that we, we brought one on location. Um, and we'd love for you to do the honors of blowing their first live to air. <laughs> no, don't point it out. Point it in. So you're going to twist it, but you really want it. Yeah, just... So, yeah, there you go. Let's see what you got there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're open. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Chef came out. <laughs> Thought a bomb had gone off. <laughs> we got the authorities here. <laughs> we got a couple uh, other things for you. I thank keep you. This. Oh, yeah, you oh can... perfect. You know what? This is going to go up on the uh, mantle we'll there. We'll sign it at the end. Perfect. <laughs> we got some well, more thank stuff. Thank you. It's a pleasure to, uh, to have you guys here. Oh, look at this. Yeah, we got That's some a swag tight hat. When you're oh, out man. there working the. Uh, Working the patio in the summer, protect that beautiful head of yours. So, oh, there's yeah, more good. goodies in here. We did, yeah. I thought it'd be fitting that since you guys are serving coffee, we're going to give you our custom branded uh, espresso <laughs> cups. Ooh, yeah. yes. The saucer gives way to uh, what's inside. Look at this. This is amazing. This is really good. Yeah, we made a pretty big mess. You good? Very with this? nice. Yeah, we're going to have to clean that yeah, up. Okay. <laughs> we, we can help after the cameras go off. It's, uh, you know what, it's fun. Yeah. I think 20 minutes in, we had to start with a bang, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But we were asking Adam where his uh, favorite restaurants in the city were. So, the, okay. the one that comes to mind, the secret spot that yeah. everyone should know, mm. is Piccolo Piano. Sister restaurant of Piano Piano. There's okay. a few of them in the city. One on Harvard, one on Mount Pleasant, I think. They have... A spot on Harvard, which it used to be called the Harvard Room, small restaurant. They have the best wood burning pizza mm. and a little bit more creative menu. They have a small patio in the back. It's one of our favorite date spots in the neighborhood. West End, definitely. Is great. it on Harvard as well? It's on Harvard, Harvard yeah. yeah. Harvard and Spadina, very close nice. to, uh, to the original piano. Yeah. The original piano, piano. Have you tried Dreyfus? Right across the street from Dreyfus. I've never been. It's friggin' good. Yeah. Eh? It's like six courses, um, very family style, like in terms of the cuisine that they serve there, but it's like hidden gem and so good. I'm so excited to try it. Yeah. I've always been uh, interested by it, but I haven't actually been there before. Yeah, it's worth it. You got to so, book in advance. Yeah. I think we're like yeah. two and a half months to get a resume. Oh, there. really? Yeah. And it was like Wednesday night at 9.30. Harvard, Harvard's gone through phases where it's had great restaurant scene because there's also a, a sushi place there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's called the Yash Yasu. Okay. Yasu. Great omakase menu. Okay. It was one of the first ones in the city. Like, it was early on. I yeah. remember going there probably 10 years ago now. And uh, and it's still there and, and doing great. So that little strip of Harvard's got some, some good places. Some good gems, yeah. And I like that it's kind of like in the center of it all. It's not like on a, te a technical main street. Yeah. Uh, but it still has like really good feeling and Dreyfus is in like this old Victorian house so it's not your typical old school restaurant style it's a very relaxed feel to it right, right. yeah, yeah. Um, I checked out the well recently I'm sure yes. you guys have been I don't know if you're yeah oh we're <laughs> anything there we're well versed in the well we've been our tour what'd you think I thought the well is very cool yeah obviously there's still a lot that's coming online okay. I went to Lulu bar okay for the first right. time there so yeah. uh Hawaiian inspired restaurant you know, obviously lulu honolulu and the restaurant group is based in calgary so this is their first expansion into toronto mm. and then they're they have another two restaurants that i think are opening in the well but uh that was a, a memorable one that i went to recently have you tried mandy's salad i have actually you and i went together on ossington we did yeah, <laughs> yeah i yeah. think that's the only time i've been oh, we did yes did, did you do the uh hose and duck salad no I, that, I think they were sold Hose out. and duck. Oh, they yeah. were sold out. Yeah. So that's our. Yeah. So so recently, I actually went recently as well to the Ossington location. And first time I went with Mark, he took me to the Ossington yeah. <laughs> location. And same thing, they were sold out of the Hoys and duck. So I had uh, we went for like the lumberjack salad or something. That's right. Like that. Yeah, lumberjack because he had a shovel. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. A, it was a big. Yeah. 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 They changed the look to go into the because the they're in the well now. They right? are. Yeah. Yeah. Very different aesthetic than yeah. Ossington. But it's packed, like every, even though it's, this is a relatively new space, like every Prince Street pizza, okay, for its own reasons, it's really busy, but like yeah. even DeMello Coffee, Quantum Coffee, yeah. like I like that concept. And I think it plays into what you were saying of that's going to be a community in its own, all within that kind of 
structure where you don't have to go, even though Spadina has some of the greatest restaurants in the city, everything's right there at your doorstep. Yeah. So I think more of yeah. that's something can be a play. You know, thinking about real estate, I don't know of any other city that's leaned so hard into that concept the same way as Toronto has. The well is the first one that's opened. Right. Mervish Village is coming along. Maybe it's gonna, you know, I don't know if it's gonna happen this year or not. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. We don't you have know, the answer to Mervish that. Mervish Village, but similar idea where you have you know work, live, play all in one community over you know a big area, and then there's two on Dufferin. There's one at Bloor and Dufferin, yeah. and then uh, at Dufferin Brock, Dupont. Brock School and Galleria Park, yeah. the old Brock yeah. School there. Um, yeah, the, all these little micro communities. I think what's good is like we can learn from other cities where New York is what did they call it like the city of neighborhoods, right? Uh, but they're built up. There is no more room to create these concepts, and this is something that we're taking on here. Yeah, um, that's going to be interesting. Uh, like, because we grew up in an era where, like, you traveled an hour for food, like that yeah. was normal. Do you think you'd adjust to that? I think you you'll do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you you would go to visit your friend and go to a restaurant in their neighborhood. You'll travel across the city, but are you doing it on a regular basis? Exactly. I yeah. don't think so. It's the convenience of of being able to just like hop down. I mean, we're surrounded by condos here, right? Like hop downstairs and just get your cup of coffee for the day, or you yeah. know, sit down and have your meal. Yeah, chill. I don't know if park. you grew up in Toronto, Joey, but I remember you know to go downtown for a restaurant was pretty normal. Like yeah. there weren't that many neighborhood restaurants, and definitely not good ones, no. right? I feel like St. Clair was like the first outside of downtown, maybe college a little bit, but St. Clair was like the really one where like places like Fado and Rushton, when they opened up, you're like, yeah. oh, I don't have to go downtown for food anymore. And I think that's starting to expand more. Yeah, I remember the, the Rushton a uh, long time ago. Yeah. Very good restaurant. Yeah, like date night. Yeah. You want to impress a girl? Yeah. So you take her. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I still take my wife there. <laughs> nice. She's still not impressed. But <laughs> we'll keep trying. No, she's impressed. She likes the Russian. You know what? That 20 years ago when you were uh, a butcher courting, yeah. that was that was a very nice meal out. <laughs> Actually, our first date was at. Uh, it was called Catch, and it was across from the Rushton. They were. That's right. Yeah, they remember were, Catch? They were owned by the same uh, yeah. people. Yep, same people managing it. That was uh, funny that uh, it all comes full circle. Yeah. Um, so, what about coffee shops? Any places you think people? I'm partial to DeMello. I do love their coffee. I think they do a great job. You got a DeMello fan right here? Yeah, yeah. Midtown, uh, and they opened up one just down the street from, I guess it was a transitional moment that's happening. So there's, oh, a, there's nice. now a new location. Two on Young? There's two on Young. Oh, Actually, sick. Just like a few doors down from each other. Yeah, yeah near Young and Eglinton. That's right, yeah. And they have, uh, yeah, new aesthetic, and they're kind of pushing that more, um, more modern feel to it. Yeah. 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 Can I just say, you've had probably 20 people try to come in. <laughs> <laughs> that is a sign of a really good place. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a very warm reception from the community and we're really happy to, uh, yeah, we're really happy to have the yeah. audience. Yeah, this couldn't be planned any better. Like, <laughs> there's been at least four or five different groups of people, uh, we're, we're recording about two hours before they open, yep. who want to come in. So that speaks to, you guys are doing probably a lot of things, right? But that's... Uh, at least one or two. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about your coffee here. Can you share the beans or is that going to be a closely guarded... Uh, so we're using pilot coffee. Okay. And uh, we're going to have an espresso, I think, uh, any minute. Cool. The coffee is pilot. You know, we have a Fiamma machine. I tend to like a more European style or Italian style, a little bit darker roast. You know, there are some great new age coffees as well. Oh, that's a good word. So I call it hipster coffee. <laughs> but I think new age is the politically correct word I should be using. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, I was opening an espresso bar for a big company maybe six or seven years ago in the city. And so we tried, I think, 10 different roasters, mostly Canadian, but you know, small, mid-sized roasters. And DeMello was the one that we ultimately picked after going through tasting at least 50 different espresso blends. And uh, I really love their dancing... Dancing, dancing goats or dancing jump, goats. jumping goats, dancing goats? Something. Goats, yeah. yeah That's yeah. what you yeah. made me try. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gotta give you more credit, man. You're, you're up there with, uh, with Mr. Adam over here with the quality. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Dark Horse is uh, very good coffee as well. Uh, they're partnered up with Detour. So, you know, they're the one shop that's in the neighborhood here. And, uh, and they, they have a great following as well. They've got, I don't know, six or seven in the GTA now. Yeah, so. I think they started on Spadina originally. Yeah. They had a, shop, um, a coffee shop just down the street here in kind of Queen East. Yeah. And uh, are they up to six, you think? Five or six? I think so. I know they're in Hamilton as well now. Yeah. So 
They probably went there during the pandemic expansion into Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Balzac's is another one that I was quite surprised of how many locations they have. Oh, yeah. They have like 15 locations. They're in like Niagara on the lake. Or yeah, they, they've lake grown a lot. And actually, they're on Porter. So I think oh, really? Porter, they have the maybe exclusive with Porter. I know that uh, whenever I fly, you know, the short haul flights to the U.S., it's Balzac's coffee and steam whistle beer. So mm. Steam whistle, I knew. I didn't know that about uh, Balzac's. Good on them. I, they're local, right? They're Toronto. Steam whistle? No, or no, no. Balzac's. Uh, Balzac's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, she uh, she was quite early on in the coffee movement. Like, I think it was before, you know, everyone was drinking espresso-based coffees when it was still mostly drip coffee in Toronto. She was on the cutting edge with espresso and, you know, beautiful design in their, their shops yeah. and, and good coffee. Yeah. yeah. My favorite one is the location uh, lands down in St. Clair in right. Uh, Foundry. Right, right. So they have one shop. Have you been there? Yeah, they, I have. Yeah. yeah. It's such a vibe in that spot when you go there. That was a converted, uh, General Electric had one of their facilities there and uh, just the ceiling heights, the smell, the second you walk in, like there's something romantic about food and real estate. At least I, I feel that romance. <laughs> I don't know if everyone else feels it, but like getting that right is, when they get it right, that feeling is so pure and just makes you enjoy the space so much more. And what I like seeing where the city is going is it's not just condos anymore. Um, and David and River City, they, they never were just condos. There was always another yeah. element to that. And I feel a lot of that's transferred over into the space here of like, this isn't just another restaurant for the purpose of serving people food. This, this feels like a place where you can come and just uh, be with friends and chill out and- Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, you know, David was really adamant on making sure that the community had that. And mm. uh, the hope is that we can replicate it in some of the other urban capital communities. Where do you know off hand? Can't tell you that yet. Oh, <laughs> but there are more coming. There, the plan is for there to be more. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Talk to a restaurant tour, and you get the you get the tea. Yeah, yeah. I love the intersection of real estate and hospitality, because it, it, with the example of Lisbon Hotel in this community, is when you have a coffee shop, a restaurant. You know, it gives it gives life to the neighborhood, right? And it gives you a place to say hi to people. We're we're already having that where. Customers will come in and wave to another table. The hey Joe, how are you? Nice yeah. to see you. Yeah. And uh, and so you know where you have that intersection of real estate that is with hospitality or you know commercial real estate, like they they complement each other. So you know to know one and not know a little bit about the other, I think is uh, putting putting blinders on. For sure, um, and I think like we're going to be seeing more of that where. The city's got to do a better job with zoning and kind of incorporating or letting people to have these type of ideas. Ooh, I'm excited. I am pumped. <laughs> oh, do you guys smell that? It smells uh, delicious. There's, Is that the uh, shirizu? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I smell that. Yeah, yeah. it smells great. I've been, I've been watching, I've been stalking your Instagram since it came up, so <laughs> I am very excited about the food. <laughs> we got, with the thing that caught my eye on the menu, I don't know if it's uh, available at this moment, um, the anchovy toast. We're uh, featuring something else. Today, nice. So okay. you guys are gonna try uh, shrimp toast, which is currently uh, the special. Shrimp. Big shrimp guy here. Nice. I love my shrimp. Oh, I'm I'm on board 100. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, th there's also the outlet to be creative here because yeah. with this many seats, you know, you're not, again, you're not planning for hundreds and hundreds of orders of something. You know, if you have 10 orders, that's probably more than enough for a night and you get to be more creative and keep the team inspired and excited uh, same thing with the bar so so do you, uh, who's kind of like driving the ideas here is it a combination of the staff and you guys Sally is the queen Sally is the queen yeah she gets she's, Sally on here <laughs> she's the one with all the great ideas and awesome. uh, you know Dave and I uh, gave her the palette to paint with and uh, support her you know creative uh, expression that's amazing so we're having a Sally creation, the shrimp toast is... Yes. Yeah. All righty. All right. The chorizo dish here. Sweet. Green sauce, windia, herb, windia and herb based, essentially. It does have a little kick to it. Okay, so we can handle it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, mushrooms, maitake, portobello, key moisters. So garlic, kaoli on the bottom of the plate, and some fried herbs. This is Blackbird's uh, sourdough. Amazing. This looks incredible. Uh, Joey, do you want to do the honors? Uh, yeah, okay. I feel like I've been talking. You deserve... Oh, the first... Uh, yeah. All right. This shot. This looks incredible. So she did say the green sauce is... A little spicy? Yeah, so just... Uh, More than okay with me. All right. All right. 
And it looks beautiful, it's easy. I love the plates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the plates were, some of them are uh, from a restaurant supply company and then a lot of them were uh, vintage shop and, and sort of thrifted by Sally and myself. Same with the glassware. Love it. One of the ideas was that in order for this to fit into the community, it couldn't be something that was shiny and new and, and feeling totally corporate. Right. So in the design, we were thoughtful to, to not over-design. Yeah, it's... There's some good, good faces. <laughs> Keep talking. Yeah. Because I got some and, words uh, at the end of this. Yeah, so we, we didn't want to over-design. We, uh, we wanted to leave the space a little bit raw to... Uh, also add some things that had a real patina to them. So the plates, the glassware, the knives are a type of knife that was created in the 70s and 80s in England. They're called Sheffield knives. Okay. So we bought all of those and sort of imported them from Europe uh, that were, you know, probably from somebody's grandmother's basement and they were selling stuff on Etsy and, uh, and that's how we, you know, put together a lot of the tableware. Amazing. It, I was going to say, this does feel like, sorry, Adam, I'm eating here. No, no, please. Um, this, a lot of the, the tableware does feel very European and very something much you would have at your grandmother's house. Yeah. You go over, like even the forks, I love the, the whole intricacy on the spoons and yep, stuff. Yep, yep. Oh my Thank God, you. I feel like a king. Thank you so much. Okay, this, the chorizo is... This is next level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the flavors of the chorizo itself is incredible and that green sauce is... It, 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 does have a, it does have a slight kick to it, uh, but oh my god, it's just everything pops. Yeah. Very simplistic, but like really, really comes together. 10 out of 10, Sally. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we wanted to have the ability to taste a bunch of different things. You know, there's, there are great restaurants where you can go and get one plate. Obviously, I, you know, I'm a fan of going and trying a bunch of different things. You know, what a, what a waste it is to have a, a palate and not use it to your... Uh, to the to, full potential. To the full potential. Yeah. Yeah. What's like the wildest dish you like? You've tried. Ooh. Have you ever had gooey duck? Goo duck? Go gooey duck? Gooey duck? No. <laughs> you, you oh, you really don't know gooey duck? No. What's a gooey duck? <laughs> it's a type of clam that's. Uh... So it's not even a duck. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I no. definitely not had it. Uh, it. It's a type of clam. You've probably seen it on online, but it's got a oval shell and then a long appendage. Okay. That that. <laughs> grows out of it, Okay. sometimes shrinks, sometimes grows. Understood. <laughs> it has some, uh, you know, potential uh, misrepresentation or potential for misrepresentation. I feel the phallic uh, <laughs> essence you're describing yeah. in, of and, this. Uh, and so it can be prepared like a clam. It's sometimes used in not raw types of sushi, but like a lightly cooked type of sushi. So if I had gooey duck clam, that was interesting. And uh, one time at Buka, we actually had lamb testicles. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. Like all the cuts that nobody likes, I'm, I can eat liver for days, tripe doesn't scare me, like I'm all for, I've had uh, lamb brain, like um, yeah. I've had testicles, I've, I've tried, uh, I've tried the D. <laughs> 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 I, I tried it. It's a little chewy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've actually had penis? I have, yeah. Wow. For so, what animal? Oh, amazing. Absolutely. All the flavors of a shrimp cocktail and a little open paste sando. 10 out of 10 so far. Yeah, You're this nailing is fantastic. It. Yeah. Um, so I just want to put in a little detail. You guys got the Nova Ponte cups, the Nova Ponte yes. espresso cups. Yes. So this is, I'm very, I'm very picky when it comes to cups. So I always feel the bottom. Yeah. And sometimes they'll trick you with the knockoff ones. And I, yeah. I, nah, these people don't knock off. This is the real deal. <laughs> it makes a big difference when you have a proper double thick ceramic cup and it holds the heat a lot more. All right, let's do this. Pinky's up let's before we dive into those shrimps because that looks so good. Did I just say I ate D on air? <laughs> <laughs> Roll with it. <laughs> uh, wow, that's good. That's good. That's very good. A nice, a nice pungent uh, mm. new age. Did I say that right? A nice new age flavor. Yeah, I mean, the... the most Italian ones have heavy roast so much that you lose some of the acidity. We don't like a roast that's that heavy. Mm -hmm. So to have something where it retains the acidity but you have that dark, roasty, chocolatey kind of flavor yep. is, uh, is the style that we like. No, there's a lot of work and effort that went into 
all the ideas, you know, the, the offering, how to make the space turn into something that's viable and enjoyable. Uh, you know, in, in thinking about decor, we wanted to create something that worked during the day. We, we have a lot of windows, floor to ceiling windows, so you get a lot of light during the day and that can make for a beautiful coffee shop, but if it feels too white and airy, then it doesn't, it's not the right ambiance in the evening. And if you go with too much dark wood and, you know, sort of evening colors and feel, then it doesn't appeal to somebody to enjoy during the day. And so it's tough to thread that needle of enjoyable at night and enjoyable during the day from a space and aesthetic standpoint. So we really, Tried to do that. So far, the reception's been good. I think you nailed it so yeah. far. Um, yeah. Everything we've had is so uniquely flavored, and yeah. it's not like something you would typically get at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that element of like, it's not a restaurant yet, so the food is incredibly good. Because sometimes you go to these places and they just have like, they'll, they'll bring in the food from the outside and you never want to, Yeah. right? Um, my big pet peeve is I don't like people working at coffee shops. Mm. Drives me nuts. I think from a, from a, from a economic standpoint, like, if you're there for three hours and you have one espresso, it's very hard for them to stay in business. Yeah. Um, so I do kind of like the fact that like I wouldn't I wouldn't come here to necessarily work. Maybe to fire off a quick email. Um, yeah. But this is like a really good in between, like a lunch spot. You know, you're doing showings, you come in, you have a quick bite. Yeah. Maybe have some poor tonic if your client's really stressing you out. <laughs> go on your way. I want to try this shrimp toast really bad. Yeah. Do you want to get in there? Let's do it. Yeah. Everybody loves a shrimp cocktail. And so it's all the flavors of that put into uh, a different form. Is there jam at the bottom? That's the cocktail sauce. Okay. Hi, guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. A little bit of Iron Chef here. You guys got the, the toast at the same time. Everyone's tasting. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah, everything has been, like I said, it's different. Mm. It's all different and really, really well done. You guys seem to compliment, you, compliment each other really well. Thank you. Appreciate it. The uh, shark and swan. <laughs> <laughs> and where, what's the origin of the nicknames? Oh, um, <laughs> mine was, I don't know how I became Mark the Shark. I just started calling myself that. I don't think anyone gave me that name. <laughs> but uh, Joy the Swan, so going back to the book Unreasonable Hospitality, Mm. There's a line in it where he talks about how the service is not where I got the inspiration for Joey from, but this just ties the hospitality piece together. Um, that the swan is very graceful above water, but below the feet are moving. They're hustling. It's, it's getting it done. Mm. And I find Joey's the same. When you meet him, he's very calm, cool, collective. He's not trying to fast sell you or do any of those type of things. But below the water, he's thinking, okay, how can I make this experience better? Where, where are they telling me that they want to live without them telling me that? He's always, you're always kind of got those... Um, the engine turning in that regard. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, there was a, a show about the Lakers, I think it's called Showtime. Okay. Uh, where it documents how uh, Magic Johnson enjoyed the Lakers. And uh, what's the guy from Step Brothers? Not Will Ferrell, the other guy. Um, what's his actual name? I can't remember. Okay, I can picture him. 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 Yeah, yeah with the, the, with the, the hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He plays Dr. Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Probably got the name wrong, but anyhow. He describes himself that way, where above water he's calm, but underneath he's, he's hustling. And I saw elements that I enjoy, so I'm like, you know what? You need an you animal name, so you enjoy the swan. That's it, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna have some more mushrooms, because these are so good. It's a, that's actually a fairly common analogy in the hospitality world, and I think they might have talked about it in The Bear. I don't okay. know how far you guys are. We finished show. it, yeah, you can, yeah. spoilers are allowed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think they talked about it in The Bear where it's, it's that idea of like presenting graceful while there's a million things going on. And uh, season two, the last episode, mm -hmm. you know, there, there were a lot of things throughout the show that were almost uh, traumatic for people that have worked in the industry. Like it, they did a very good job of representing it, sometimes exaggerating, but a lot of that stuff has happened. And in the last episode of season two, something that I think they just did an incredible job of was every time that one of the characters goes from the kitchen to the dining room or vice versa, they change the music in an instant. And it goes from really 
heavy, intense rock music when they're in the kitchen with the very bright, intense lights. Yes. And the second they cross the threshold of the door, the music changes, they go to the low lighting of the dining room. And that's an experience that you have as somebody that's working in a restaurant. You know, it's, it's probably true of most, uh, most operations and most businesses. There's uh, the, the hidden underbelly, all of the operational stuff that makes it work. In hospitality, you go between the two so frequently, which I think they really did a great job of showing. I, I didn't pick that up, but I can totally visualize, especially the lighting, how it's so bright in the kitchen, and you definitely get that vibe of like the chaos ends in the kitchen and the service starts in yeah. the uh, dining hall, I guess, or the restaurant, you call it. Um, what was your, who's your favorite character? Cousin Rich is, is Cousin. a great one. I would, I, I was. I wasn't sure if you were gonna say that. That's ours. Is it yours? Cousin, Cousin is. Cousin, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure if you were gonna take the same take as being in the restaurant industry. Cause some people have been like, oh, he's annoying. We know that guy, we don't like him. Yeah, he's the, mm. he's the uh, rags to riches story. So, okay. you know, it's, it's easy to uh, fall in love with that character. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, they did such a good job transitioning him to where, you finished it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Didn't want a spoiler for you, yeah. No, 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 we're good, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they yeah. had him get the best, the, the best turnaround. Like that's yeah. like, that he held on to that old tradition up until the last yeah. second. Yeah. 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 Character arc was beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, obviously being from Toronto, the, the Maddie Matheson hometown, yep. uh, yeah. hometown proud. Yeah. We, have you tried Maddie's patties yet? Oh, I have. So good. Very good. I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was going to be like a uh, Toronto like overhyped yeah. thing, but it was... Uh, no, very good burgers. Yeah. I think you, you know, you, the other one that you and I have spoken about before is Cabanos. I, they also have great burgers. Are they still around? Oh, yeah. Okay. So they're no longer in kitchen the hub. kitchen hub Yeah, at Dufferin. Mm -hmm. So they're at Young and Bloor in their original location. Oh, we tried that one. Yeah, we were there. On the, it's like a side street, St. Joseph or something exactly. like that. Exactly, it's yeah. one street just behind Young Street. Yeah, because yeah. they um, they used to be on Dundas. Yes. And that's no yeah. longer there. Okay, that's good to know. So okay, so I got a little worried that Cabanos was. <laughs> yeah, it's got that like almost like that mac sauce that, that goes with it. It's yeah. like a, it's like a, a matured mac sauce. That's a good way of putting it. What was that word you taught us in the tonic? Yep. Yeah. Quinine. Point. I better write that down. Yeah, I don't need to end the notes. <laughs> we got to work it into like a sale. It's like when we're showing up, like, oh, the unit here is very quinine. <laughs> yeah. The views are quinine. <laughs> yeah, Cabanos has great burgers. The other one from Maddie Matheson that uh, I really like is Fonda Balam. Okay. It's on Dun oh yeah, on Dundas, Dundas and Palmerston, maybe just west of Bathurst. And you know it was a partnership with him and the uh, the team from Quetzal. Okay. The I know they parted ways with uh, Grant Van Gameren, and you know there was a media coverage on it. It was not a not a pretty breakup. nice breakup. Got it. And yeah, they partnered with Maddie Matheson, and so now there's this great taco and Mexican restaurant at uh, on Dundas called Fonda Balam. I did not Worth know that. Out. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. I own prime seafood, but I've not tried there yet. I'm not eaten there yet. It's supposed to be amazing, like yeah. really excellent well execution. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a, it, industry veterans there, like the people that are actually there running it day to day, are consummate professionals, like yeah. really experienced. The the chef Colson was, I believe, the executive chef of Canoe for years. Like really talented guy, uh, great service, and the space is beautiful. Yeah, really. Uh, and then that's a, a restaurant that I think is going to be around for a long time. You know, they obviously invested in the build. Their location is great. Like it's at Queen and Ossington ish, but yeah. it's not on the Ossington and yeah, the, yeah. you know, the Ossington that we all know and yeah. maybe love. Sometimes not. Sometimes you want to forget about some yeah. nights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one. So yeah, Maddie Matheson. You know, as much as his career has had a like unpredictable rocket ship tra trajectory. Like he has, I think, made a real uh, positive impact on the dining scene in Toronto. Yeah, and I think it's it's easy to hate on him when you watch from afar and kind of the pre-Bear stuff. I, I know, I don't know, he's had, I've always had this weird feeling like, is he really someone, I don't know, but after the Bear and kind of definitely after that burger, I was like, okay, this is a real deal. Like, any yeah. parts of labor obviously had a big part in that as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's uh, the guy works his ass off. You cannot, you know, he's done so many things for so long, from the Vice days to the Queen West West days, like Parkdale days, like he deserves the success he has now. It's easy to hate on yeah. someone when you see them, but like it's been like 20 years of restaurants and shows and everything else. And it's 
glad to see finally. I think he's even executive producer of the Bear or something on the that side of it. He had a big part in it. Yeah, no, and you could tell when you're watching it that it seems very authentic. It seems mm -hmm. very like what you would experience in a restaurant, and the vibes like they get it right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this has been lovely. We should uh, probably start to wrap up because we got to clean up some confetti. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Adam, thanks for having us. It's fantastic. Yep. Um, oh, it's been a pleasure, you guys. Location? 19 Lauren Harris Square. Currently, you guys are open? Tuesday to Saturday, 5 p.m. to midnight. Summer, going to have a patio, eventually exactly. breakfast and lunch. Yeah, we expect in the spring we'll be open from 8 a.m. until midnight. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. We'll awesome. Leave it there? Yeah. Thanks okay. for having us. Thank you, guys. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Living's Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at torontolivingswithans.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening.